So it's finally time to schedule your hair transplant, buy the flight tickets and book a hotel. And now you are thinking how to make your whole journey smoother. Would you need to buy a travel pillow or for how long you need to book your hotel? In this video you're gonna find out all the best practices to make your journey much smoother. Hi guys, my name is Rolandas and I had my hair transplant done in Portugal with Dr. Bruno Ferreira uh, with a bit more than 3,500 grafts uh, implanted in the frontal portion of my scalp and currently I'm on week 8 and this is how it looks. And guys, if you're also supporting the message about no bullshit in the hair transplant and hair loss industries, help me to spread the word by subscribing to this channel, engaging in the comments down below so we can reach more people and save more hair. And now let's discuss all of the things that you need to take care of before your hair transplant. The first thing I'll definitely advise you is uh, to take as many holidays as you possibly can from your work if you're working for someone and my advice would be at least two weeks. If you schedule your hair transplant on your first or second day of your holidays there is a high chance that you're gonna come back to work uh, after you're gonna remove all your scabs from your recipient area and you're gonna look nice and clean. You really don't want to come to work with all of these nasty scabs. So let's talk about hotels. I would obviously advise to book a hotel as close to clinic as possible so you don't need to have this hassle, you know, and to think about how you're gonna possibly go there and go back uh, so you can possibly even avoid taking an Uber and bumping your head. What we want to do is to minimize the risk of grafts not growing out uh, after like eight, 10 months, let's say. So we have to start from the beginning. So book your hotel as close as you can. Also, uh, try to book it as long as you can. I would suggest at least seven days. Uh, because that's the most crucial time for your crafts so they're gonna be able to properly anchor and also my big suggestion is to avoid Airbnb and book a proper hotel so you don't really need to do anything uh, you literally wake up go in the morning go downstairs grab your breakfast everything is done you just go there pretty much and eat you go back to your room and you relax especially for the first couple of days after the surgery it's crucial for you not to have any activity whatsoever you literally need to move as little as you can so when you're booking your plane tickets there's a couple of things you would need to think about first of all I would suggest for you to book an extra check-in luggage just in case uh, because there's a high chances that your surgeon gonna give you some shampoos and whatnot uh, which can be possibly even bigger than 100 milliliters so when you're gonna go back home there will not gonna be any problems with the security and they're not gonna confiscate any of the shampoos plus there's some more space for other things uh, to, to keep you entertained for the next seven days by the way subscribe to my channel if you haven't already you can grab the laptop the different consoles you know books uh, whatever it is uh, tennis racket no don't take tennis racket whatever it is you can keep yourself entertained with because let's be real if you're gonna be sitting in your uh, hotel for the next seven days trust me gonna get boring so think about it beforehand so when you're overall traveling, I would suggest to take Uber and trust me, don't be greedy on this. When your head is numb after the surgery and it will be numb, you will find yourself so clumsy like you've never been before. There's gonna be a very high risk of you bumping your head uh, when even, even with the Uber when you're entering and exiting the, the, the car. So it's better to minimize the risk uh, by minimizing the amount of time you're entering or exiting the different vehicles and whatnot. So just take one Uber from airport straight to home and you're done. Also one pro tip, when you arrive just the night before your hair transplant, I would suggest to go and do some grocery shopping. The more things you're gonna buy beforehand, the less stress you're gonna be afterwards. Also there is quite a few things that I would really suggest for you to pack to your luggage uh, before your hair transplant. And number one is travel pillow. The main purpose of travel pillow would be not for traveling, you see, after your hair transplant, you will have to sleep in elevate position. Some of the surgeons actually recommending to use the travel pillows uh, to sleep with because the travel pillow will literally stop you from, uh, you know, turning on the side to move your head. And I would really advise you to look into this particular one because it's quite big over here and it's extremely comfortable. It's from memory foam. I was sleeping with this pillow for up to, I think, 10 nights, to be honest. Uh, just to stay on the safe side, you know, just in case if I'm gonna, for example, you know, move around when I'm sleeping and just, you know, destroy my grafts completely. While you're sleeping, you really don't want to turn on, on your side and uh, destroy your precious grafts. You can either dislodge them and they're gonna start growing in their weird angles or directions, or you can completely destroy them so they're not gonna grow at all. So, you know, if you pay so much money and you put so much time and effort into this, I would stay on a safe side and, you know, sleep for at least 7 to 10 nights. 
And this particular travel pillow will definitely help you to, uh, to sleep straight in a straight line and literally you're not gonna be able to move around. By the way, I really recommend you to start practicing sleeping on your back because that's the only way you're gonna be sleeping after your surgery for at least like seven to 10 nights. Also, another thing that you really have to put in your luggage is shirts and different hoodies. You're not allowed to wear any t-shirts after your surgery because uh, there is a high chance that when you're gonna be putting it on or taking it off, you're gonna damage your grafts, which again, you really don't want to do it. So instead, wear any shirt, or if it's cold even enough, just put a, on top a hoodie and keep your graft safe. Also, another thing that you really don't want to do is to bend your head down after your hair transplant. If you're gonna be doing like so, straight after the surgery, there is a high chance that your graft's gonna, just gonna pop out or they're gonna start bleeding or not, because in this case, you're gonna put more pressure into your, uh, into your head. So I would advise not to have any complex uh, shoes with the uh, laces and whatnot. I would suggest to take as many of slip-in shoes as possible, or if you've got a trainer, just make them very loose so you can easily slip into them. Definitely grab umbrella, just in case. Also, small mirror. So the mirror will be needed, especially after the surgery, so you're gonna be able to see your donor area and you can put a saline solution or any gel or whatever is it your surgeon gonna give it to you and spread it evenly and cover to cover all the areas. And another pro tip, if you're wearing a glasses, I would advise you to buy a pair of contact lenses. My hair transplant surgeon uh, extracted a couple of grafts uh, just above my ear, I don't remember now, I think it was the left side, uh, to pick up those finer hairs, you know, single grafts to put in the hairline. So, you know, and after you're gonna, you're gonna be putting your uh, glasses in my touch, it might, it might irritate, you know, that's not a really nice thing. So just instead, put your contact lenses and you're gonna be safe. So did I miss something? Is there something else would you like to include? Let me know down in the comments below your opinion. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one. Uh -huh.